okay now let's quickly go through the part list now i'll be stressing upon one part that is wind loss specifications and the mooring wind motor specifications now if you see here the kilowatt rating of the of the wind loss is much higher than uh, the mooring which it is almost i mean little less than double so so and even the rpm if you see it is it is lower compared to the mooring winch now what has happened in one of the vessel is that uh, it was not seen by the ship staff that the kilowatt rating was different and they blindly uh, renewed a wind loss motor with a mooring winch motor it worked for for a few few minutes they tried to heave up the anchor but uh, midway what happened was uh the there was there was an internal damage within the motor because it could not obviously could not take up the torque the uh, the uh, the anchor came down at such a velocity that it ended up breaking the bitter end of the uh, anchor chain vessel and vessel lost the anchor this happened at fujera and uh, what ha- what followed was there was a dispensation taken from the flag administration uh, and the vessel had to sail without uh, without a, a starboard anchor to the next uh, convenient port where it could pick up a new anchor the anchor uh, costed a bomb to the company and there was a lot of commercial losses and uh, and the headache that the vessel had to and the of course the risk that the vessel had to you know bear for the next voyage so that is one thing which i would like to tell you just go through the part list just check the ratings of the mooring winch motor wind loss motor because you have very little time when these things go wrong and uh, you might not see these small things and it may lead to a, a major disaster so even with the mooring wind loss if the port wind loss goes bad do not blindly cannibalize parts from the starboard wind loss because even if you see here the drawing numbers are different for the port wind loss as well as the starboard wind loss there is certain changes that needs to be done because of the direction of rotation of the motor the port side may be motor rotating in a clockwise direction the starboard uh, motor may be rotating in a anti clockwise direction so there is some changes to be done so be careful about cannibalizing parts especially with your mooring winch and windlass equipments coming down the pump unit pump unit is more or less the same little bit of uh, 37 kilowatt this is a motor actually okay every hydraulic system will start f- from a reservoir and there are two uh, sections in this that is the outdoor part and the indoor part now we'll talk about the indoor section the indoor section usually is in your foxel uh, there is a reservoir here with visga 68 as the hydraulic oil and uh, here there is a the filling cap or the replenishing replenishing uh, cap where you fill visga 68 or whatever your hydraulic oil uh, is being used on board 75 is the temperature sensor 74 is a level sensor 76 is a normal check valve 09 is a normal valve here okay here you will see that uh, these two are the written lines 32a is the solid line a solid line is drawn here this is your written line and 25a is also your written line but this these are from the drains various leakages uh, which can happen uh, in the hydraulic system those leakages come in this through this written line there is a filter and a check valve just adjacent to it 777 is a breather now from the hydraulic uh, from the reservoir please watch this video till the end for a correct understanding of the system from the point s1 your hydraulic oil will come through this strainer to the hydraulic pump this pump as as i had explained earlier is a by direction is a unidirectional variable displacement electrically driven pump and p1 is the discharge of this pump it is going to this solenoid which is located on the outdoor that is on your deck now what is the purpose of this uh direction control valve it is basically acts as uh, helps you to get a redundancy in the system that is from the hydraulic pump number 1 you can operate number 2 wind loss also you can operate number 1 wind loss from the number 2 hydraulic pump how does it do it before that what kind of high direction control valve is this this is a 4 by 2 4 by 2 lever operated wedge type dented type direction control valve so why do we need a dented dented type it is because of the vibrations it does not 
let the logic change so it keeps once you set the logic it is fixed by this dented arrangement uh, and due to the vibration it will not change now now let me talk about the redundancy how it works the hydraulic oil from the hydraulic the hydraulic oil from the pump discharge will be coming here from p to the point a and then it will go on to this port p at the same time there is a small tapping given here and the hydraulic oil will move towards the left and it will be blocked in this direction now if you want to operate the the port side uh, windlass what you need to do is you need to operate this lever so this right side logic will be uh, in operation the hydraulic oil will move from point p to point b and from b it will come here to the 25a line and it will move on to the the port side windlass likewise the return line will come back okay so in the normal operation lever is in this position the hydraulic oil will come here from this tapping it will come to this uh, port side uh, direction control wall but it will be blocked here so there will be no movement there will be no movement in the port side system okay so we are clear with that so let's move on let's move on to that move on to the the next direction control wall now i would like you to watch this video carefully till the end so that you will be knowing all the small small aspects of this uh, hydraulic circuit now what kind of direction control valve is this yes this is a 4 by 2 lever operated again this is a dented tandem center or closed center a direction control valve this will this will help us either to heave up the anchor or lower the anchor these these uh, logics at the extreme end will either heave up the anchor or will lower the anchor. This lever is also connected to a rod via a rod to a remote operated electrically controlled actuator. So this is that actuator arrangement. You can remotely operate this. That system is given and it is coupled directly with the lever of this, of this uh, lever uh, of this uh, spool okay and now uh, going ahead now when the hydraulic oil is coming from to this end okay it is simply getting returned to the reservoir so basically initially when you start the pump there is this inching process where you are heating up the system so that goes on that goes on now a command is to be okay in this section i would like you to be very attentive <clears throat> because this is the critical uh, section of the video which helps you to correctly understand the entire process how we are achieving the heaving and the lowering operation by the help of this direction control valve here the displacement control direction control valve here and the hydraulic motor here now coming to this we are operating this lever in such a way that uh, the logic at the right hand side is in is in operation so this is for your uh, heaving up operation so when you heave up the anchor you need to remember that there is a lot of inertia that we have to overcome and uh, it is a slow process so the hydraulic oil from the point p will flow will flow through this direction and uh, it will come on to this point here you have a check valve and uh, also you have this pressure compensating valve in earlier video we had seen that uh, during the the, uh, the heaving up operation the hydraulic oil will flow through this check one and not through this pressure compensating one so it comes through this uh, check valve from this point from this junction basically there are two three paths for this hydraulic oil one is it can go to your hydraulic motor second it can act on your uh, relief valve if the pressure is more the relief valve may lift also there is a third thing that is the shuttle valve shuttle valve is basically check valves in uh, opposite direction if you see this this acts like a or gate so if you have supply from either of the sides from the top or from the bottom the hydraulic oil will flow in this direction so this is like a or gate so the hydraulic oil is coming here it is going to the hydraulic uh, motor it is also coming to this position through the shuttle valve it is going to this it is coming to this junction and there are three points 
three tappings one it is acting to the extreme left side of the spool other to the point a and the third is to the point h i would like you to listen to this very carefully it is acting to the in three direction of the spool that is b h and to the point a this hydraulic pressure will keep the spool in this in this position that is the extreme right logic if you see here h r x y so this is this is the logic which is presently in use this logic is for low displacement is for the least displacement if you are initially starting a hydraulic motor there is a minimum displacement that is always required to be maintained so this right end logic helps you to maintain the minimum logic so how does it work listen to this very carefully from the point h the hydraulic oil will flow to the point x from x it will come and act on the lower end of the piston this is a variable displacement uh, hydraulic motor we just discussed so we need to adjust the angle of the plate here so it is acting at the bottom hydraulic oil from the back side of the piston will come in this direction from the point y it gets drained to the point r here you can see r here and from r it is coming to the drain of the hydraulic motor okay so a minimum angle is maintained in the swash plate so that so that there is a minimum displacement which is happening so this is one thing i need to, you to remember now listen to me carefully the hydraulic oil from this point okay after the check wall i said there are three directions of the flow of oil so one we have already discussed second is to the relief wall now if it exceeds it will lift otherwise it is okay the third is it will act on the suction of this hydraulic motor so you are aware that during lifting an anchorage there is an a there is a very high amount of inertia which this system has to overcome so when the inertia is high what is going to happen the pressure of the system is also going to be very high so this pressurized oil from the discharge of the hydraulic pump will come here from this junction it will come in this direction and it will act on the point c what is going to happen is this what is going to happen is uh, that uh, the hydraulic oil from this point through the shuttle valve will come and it will be acting on the point b h and a again but this time the pressure from the left side listen to me carefully the pilot pressure from the left side from the point b plus the spring tension will be higher than the point a pressure at the point a so what is going to happen if the pressure is high here the entire spool will move to the right direction so this high displacement logic will come into picture now you are lifting an anchor which is at higher inertia you need larger displacement to overcome it so this logic will be in use so how will the hydraulic oil flow now if this comes to this this extreme position the hydraulic oil will straight away move from h to the point y it will act on top of the piston the drain from the bottom of the piston will come down and from the point r it will go to your hydraulic motor and it will be drained are you clear now so this piston will move down you will get a larger displacement and you are able to heave up the anchor now let us go to the other condition that is you are trying to lower the anchor when you are lowering the anchor the logic at the extreme left is in use hydraulic oil from point p will move diagonally it will come here it will act on the relief wall and from this point it will act it will it will act at the point c it will come down through this check wall it will act at the point h it will act at the point a it will act at the point b okay now what is happening is that pressure at point a and pressure at point c together will exceed the pressure of point b 
and the spring tension correct so the spool will move towards the left side of course the default position will be maintained and uh, you the hydraulic oil will flow from point H to point X it will act from back side of the piston and the hydraulic oil from the top of the piston will be drained into the through this uh, to diagonally and it will go to the hydraulic motor now you have a minimum displacement you don't need that much of torque tor because you are lowering the anchor okay or the only difference is you need to remember is the hydraulic oil will also be acting at the point C unlike lifting of the anchor you are having an additional hydraulic pressure acting on the point C point A plus point C will overcome the pressure at high point B and the spring tension this is how you are achieving the lowering of the hydraulic now the return will remain the same the return oil will uh, flow back to our reservoir this is how you are achieving a heaving and lowering operation I would like you to watch this video again for a correct understanding and uh, make sure that uh, you have gone through this video before you join the next episode.